Okay, now we're uh, going to discuss section four of, of chapter one, which is about the power set of a set. Uh, we've already covered a lot of the material in this chapter, so um, hopefully there won't be too much new, just a little bit of terminology. So um, the power set of a set is the collection of subsets of a set. So it's a way of making a new set from a set that you begin with. So uh, if, um, if you start with a set A, then the power set of A, which you write with this fancy P notation, P for power, is the set all of whose elements are the, sub, the set made up of subsets of A. So if you were going to use subset note, set builder notation, you would write it like this. You would say that the power set of A is the set whose elements are the subsets of the set A. So um, we've already seen something about subsets, so uh, maybe we can make this concrete in a very simple example. So if our set A just has the elements 0, 1, and 3 in it, well, we already know all the subsets. We know that the number of subsets of A is 2 cubed, which is 8, because A has three elements. And you remember that one way to think about how you make subsets is you go through the elements and you can either put an in or an out to say uh, whether you keep that element or not in the subset, and that all possible choices gives you all the subsets. And if that works for a finite set. So if we made a list, the empty set is always a subset of every set. And then if we keep 0 but not 1 and 3, we get the set 0. If we keep 1 but not 0 or 3, we get the set just containing 1. If we keep 3 but not 0 and 1, we have the set just 3. Then we can keep the two element sets, two element subsets, 0, 1, 0, 3, and 1, 3. And then finally we can take the set itself, which is always a subset of every set. So if we put the pieces here together, we have eight. These are the eight subsets. Here's one zero element set, three one element sets, three two element sets, and one three element set. The power set is just the set that you get by putting all of those subsets into the set. So I've taken the braces to mean that everything inside there is a set, and I've listed the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight subsets to um, that we've worked out for A, and that's the power set of A. Look at a couple of other maybe examples that's a little bit less obvious. So if you start with the empty set, the power set of the empty set is a set all of whose elements are subsets of the empty set. But the empty set only has one subset itself because the only way you, there are no elements to choose, so any subset can't have any elements, and there's only one empty set. So the empty set is the uh, only subset of the empty set. So the difference here, though, is that the power set of the empty set is a set whose element is the empty set. Uh, if you want to uh, play around, oh, maybe it's worth pointing out that we know that the empty set has zero elements. So the size of the power set, which is the number of subsets of the empty set, is 2 to the number of elements in the empty set, which is 2 to the 0, which is 1. And sure enough, we have just one element in the power set of the empty set, namely the empty set. Just for fun, what about this? So this is the power set of the set whose elements is the empty set. And this is a set with one element, so it should have two subsets. And the two subsets are the empty set and the set itself. So the power set of the empty set 
the power set of the set containing the empty set, which is the power set of the power set of the empty set, has 2 to the 1 element, which is 2. What about a one element set? Well, if you have a one element set, it has only two subsets. You can either keep the one element or not. If you don't keep the one element, you get the empty set. If you keep the one element, you get the set itself. So the number of elements in the set A is one, and the number of set elements in the power set of the set A is two, which is two to the one. Let's just point out a couple of things uh, that are not correct. One, one thing is whatever, this power set operator takes a set as an argument. So you can't write P of 1. 1 isn't a set. You could write P of the set containing 1. That's allowed. Um, you can't write, for instance, P of 2, 3, 4. This doesn't mean anything. But P of the set containing 2, 3, and 4, this means something. It means the set, all of the, whose elements are the full set of subsets of the three element set, 2, 3, and 4. Here's another some place that you could get tripped up. So we have here the set which, whose elements are the number 1 and then the set containing 1 and 2. So the power set of that set has to contain, well, first of all, it's a set. The power set is always a set. And it has to contain every subset. And the subsets are sets. So what are the subsets of this set? Well, there's the subset 1 that just contains 1. And then there's the empty set, which is always a subset. And then there's the set itself, and then there's the place where you can get tripped up. It's tempting to say that 1, 2 is a subset of 1, 1, 2. But that's not correct, because what is correct is that this set is an element of that set. It's not a subset. If you want it to be a subset, then you need to take the one element set that contains it. So the power set here um, consists of the empty set, the set containing 1, the set containing the set 1, 2, and the set containing 1, and the set containing 1, 2. It does not include the set containing 1, 2 by itself. So this is this business of distinguishing between sets and elements. What about some infinite cases? Well, the, power, the natural numbers, the power set of the natural numbers, this is a pretty gigantic thing. We can't really list all of its elements, um, but we can list some elements. Uh, basically, any set of natural numbers, so like 1, 3, 11, 14, is an element to the power set. Notice that I've used the element sign backwards. That's maybe a trick, but it's a little inelegant. We'd be better off to write it this way. The set of even numbers. is an element of the power set of the natural numbers because it's a subset of the natural numbers. Um, the set of perfect squares. <coughs> Excuse me. Is an element of the power set of the natural numbers. And if you wanted to somehow think of a way of, of how you could list every possible um, subset of the natural numbers. You could remember the I and O trick. 
So you look at the natural numbers, which we can write in order as one, two, three, four, dot, dot, dot. And if we want to describe a subset, A, we give a list of I's and O's where an I means that element is in the subset and an O means it's out of the subset. So we could say, for instance, I, I, O, I, O, O. Sorry, I don't mean to use uh, braces here. I could, let's make a, an ordered, an infinite ordered sequence like this. And under our rule, this corresponds to the set. Well, it contains one, two, and four. And assuming these are all O's, then it just contains one, two, and four. Um, but actually, any sequence, any infinite sequence of, of I's and O's gives us a subset. And all the subsets are given by any possible infinite sequence of I's and O's. If you like, you could think of the I's and O's as zeros and ones, for example. The I's could be ones and the zeros could be o, uh, zeros. And you could think of this as just an infinite sequence of ones and zeros. And any such sequence would correspond to a subset of the natural numbers where wherever you have a one, you keep that element and wherever you have a zero, you don't. So in this case, you'd have one, two, four, five, six. This is one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But there might be other things uh, which are also included. So you can think of the sub power set of the natural numbers as the collection of all infinite sequences of I's and O's or ones and zeros. The power set of the real numbers or the power set of the real numbers, the, the coordinate plane, that's really huge. And you really have, don't have any good way to think about it. But just to indicate it, if you think of this as R2, any, any subset of R2 like this one, Call this here x. So x is an element of the power set of R2. And notice that I'm using element of because the elements of the power set are sets. So here x is this subset, or maybe we could look at, it could just be a line maybe. Here's y. y is an element of the power set of R2. Um, z cross z which is the collection of integers, x and y, pairs of integers. We looked at this once before, I think, or we looked at the natural numbers cross the natural numbers, and these you can think of as the points in R2 which have integer coordinates. So like this one, and 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 so on. And that's a subset of R cross R. So in fact, Z cross Z is an element of the power set of R2. We don't have a way of, of writing these down in any systematic way. It's a vast, vast collection of things. So let's look at one uh, sort of example that brings a whole bunch of ideas together. And uh, see if we can figure out what's going on. So um, I think I'm, there's a typo here. This is supposed to be, what is the cardinality of the power set of A cross B if A has M elements and, and this should say B. Okay, well, we fixed that up. So um, first of all, A cross B, this is the collection of pairs, A, B, where A is in A and B is in B. And we know that the number of elements in a Cartesian product is the product of the number of elements in the two components. And if you remember, that's because we can make a grid and we can list the elements of A along the x-axis and the elements of B along the y-axis, and in, we get a grid, and 
in each box here, we have a pair A, B, and since there are M boxes along the x-axis and N boxes along the y-axis, we have a total of M, N boxes. Now when you take the power set of a product, you get the collection of subsets of that Cartesian product. And we know that the number of elements in the power set of a set is 2 to the number of elements in the set, which in our case is 2 to the mn. And Maybe to make this absolutely uh, concrete, just so you can see an example, let's suppose that m equals n equals 2. So let's suppose that a consists of a and b, and b also, b is consists of, let's say, 0 and 1. So a cross b has four elements. The four elements are a0, a1, B0 and B1. Now the power set of A cross B in this case has 16 elements, 2 to the fourth. I don't really want to write out all 16 of those elements, although I suppose we could. Um, but for example, some sample elements would be, for example, the subset which contains A0, B0, and B1 is an element of the power set of A cross B. Because it's a, sub, it, it's a subset of A cross B, it consists of the first, third, and fourth elements, and because it's a subset of A cross B, it's an element of the power set of A cross B. We could do one more, I suppose. Um, the set consisting of just B0 and B1 is also, this is a subset of A cross B. And so B0, B1 is an element of the power set of A cross B. Okay.